that I want in the locked position when the bus is unattended. This is a security interlock. I think the brand name is Vandalock. The idea is that this slide bolt can be put in the locked position when the bus is unattended so that vandals can't simply raise this lever and get at the contents of the bus from the outside. But unless you remember to slide the bolt back when you try to start the engine, it'll just scream at you and not start, which for our present purposes is a nuisance. I'll demonstrate. On the schoolie.net forum, some helpful participants uploaded instructions for how to disable this all the way up to the uh, fuse panel to the left of the driver. The instructions seem only slightly less complicated than diffusing a bomb. For my present purposes, if I can just make a change here and cover it back up again, I can leave the more complete dismantling till later. I think my next step is to dismantle that switch, but I'm conscious of the consequences if I do something wrong and then I can't start the bus and it's parked in a place where it can't be overnight. So what I've done first is to move it to the place where I am allowed to park it overnight. Now that I've got the switch disassembled, it appears that when the plunger is in the out position, where the spring wants it, that these two contacts, the two white ones, are shorted together. When the plunger is depressed, that piece of metal moves to the rear, which shorts out the two black wires in the rear. I want to persuade the system that the switch is depressed, which is the position it's in when the slide bolt is unlocked. So I've just got to replicate those settings. If I'm right, then all I need to do is use this black jumper cable to short out the two rear conductors uh, while keeping the, the two white ones disconnected. Let's give it a try. Yep, that's just what we want. Everything is screwed down and labeled. This approach is decidedly less elegant than the one described on the forums that involves removing the wiring right back to the breaker panel. But until I unscrew the wire races on both sides of the bus and start uh, taking out wiring along the length of the bus, this will have to do. At least it means that I no longer have to make sure that this slide bolt is in the right position for the bus to start. I can't install a permanent lithium ion battery bank until, for example, I rip up the old floor and put down a new insulated one. So I'm going to be relying on the starting batteries more than I would like to in the final build. I found these wires here that are uh, 12 volts and on the hot side of the ignition and I'm just tapping into them in the short term to run accessories. Though I want to be careful not to run accessories for too long with the engine off uh, so as to not run down the starter batteries. I've removed what I take to be the PA system including where the microphone clip was. Somehow I managed to get the uh, overhead flashers stuck in the on position which would have drained the uh, starter battery so I removed the switch, disconnected the lights, temporarily covered the switch. 
the cigarette lighter socket providing 12 volts DC to the left of the driver's seat was a corroded mess and was uh, only providing intermittent contact. I was pleased to see that it's a truly universal part that I picked up at Canadian Tire, uh, pulled some screws out, um, unscrewed it and popped in the new one and it works fine. There is a heater about halfway down the driver's side of the bus. Two long houses loop hot antifreeze from the engine compartment back to the heater. I'm going to be removing the heater, so I asked the dealership to cut the hoses short, creating a tighter loop. They did so just behind the driver's seat. I'm glad I didn't attempt it myself, because I would have cut the hoses in the engine compartment, sabotaging the driver's in-dash heating. I've unbolted the rear heater from the floor and turned it on its side. I would like a record of the wiring here, because I expect I'll disconnect it shortly. This switch with an icon of a fan labeled passenger heater has two speeds, low and high. It controls the fan that was part of the passenger heater. I'd like to understand the wiring a bit better. My meter tells me that when I have the switch at the dashboard set at the low fan setting, it energizes the white wire connecting to the red wire. When I flick the switch to high, I see that the black wire connected to the orange wire is energized. I'm going to label those in case I later want to use either the switch or the fan or both. I can't envision driving the fan off the starter batteries, which is what would result if I uh, used the existing wiring, starter battery slash alternator when the vehicle's running. But I haven't ruled out the possibility of using this as a fan, perhaps as a ceiling fan, as a DC motor, uh, reversing the leads ought to make it go backwards with the right wiring. So then I'd uh, be able to reverse the direction of the airflow. But that's for way down the road. I've removed the rear passenger fan from its housing and labeled the cables going into it and the cables coming from the switch up at the dashboard using what's turning out to be a really handy little brother label maker. It may seem like kind of an obsessive step to take, but I've spent a lot of time in the past trying to track down what switch energizes what wire and spending a few minutes now labeling I think can save me a lot of time later. Thank you.